If you're looking for me, I'm not up there. I'm up here, you may be seated. If you're looking for a leadership, you don't always have to look to the front to find it. Great leadership doesn't start out on the stage. It doesn't start out as governors or mayors or presidents or CEOs or managers. Great leadership starts out in the back. Today we're going to be talking about leadership, and before you do, we want to prepare your hearts and minds by understanding that leadership starts in the pews. If you're in a church, it starts in the pews. If you're in a business, it starts down in the janitorial booths. It starts with menial things. That's why the Bible said, despise not the day of small beginnings. You have to understand though, and I want you to get this in your mind and in your heart and most of all in your head about leadership. When you begin to grapple with leadership and life begins to move you along, career, opportunities, or I believe the presence of the Holy Spirit begins to move you along because promotion really doesn't come from the east or the west, it really does come from God. It is possible for life to lead you faster than your mind is prepared to handle. God can move you into such a place that positionally you are in a state of leadership but mentally and emotionally, you really haven't got a grip on what life has handed you. And if you don't know what you have, you don't know how to take care of it. If you don't know how to take care of it, you can mess around and lose it. The truth of the matter is, uh, leaders come from ordinary places. They deal with ordinary issues. And I'm gonna share some things with you that I think are very, very helpful for you to realize. First of all, I want you to understand that when you're saying to yourself that, you want to be a great leader and you want to really go the extra mile and you want to do what has to be done, you're asking for trouble. You are absolutely asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. And if you think about this a minute, you, you'll learn a very important concept that I think you need to understand. In the corporate world, in the business world, they actually pay you more money as you move up the ladder with more responsibility, okay? So if you are a superintendent, you might not make as much as a general manager. A general manager might not make as much as a regional manager. A CEO would make more than a regional manager. Let me tell you something. They're paying you for conflict. It, it's, uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's, it's not enough to have the degrees. What they're paying you for is your ability to manage conflict and pressure and struggles. Let, let me speak it, since I'm in church, let me speak it in biblical language. To him whom much is given, much is required. And so the more that is placed into your hands, the more you have to be able to handle and deal with and to be able to manage it. And I want to say something to you, to those of you, all of us are leaders in some way. All of us are leaders, whether you're leading your children or whether you're leading your family or just leading yourself. Sometimes it's hard to get yourself to act right. But as we go up in levels of leadership and we begin to develop more responsibility, we also begin to embrace more pressure and more problems and more adversity and new levels bring new devils, bring new challenges, bring new opportunities, more of everything. Somebody just say more of everything. So when you say, when you are where you are right now and you say, I can't take this, I can't handle this, I don't want any more, this is driving me crazy, you are saying, I don't want to go any higher. You are rejecting the call to move forward because moving forward and moving up means more problems. In fact, the, the problems that you're dealing with right now may be the fact that you are in training for the next level of leadership. If, if you don't let it break you, if you don't let it destroy you, if you don't wimp out and let it beat you down, if you just 
master the situation, refuse to be intimidated, and, and learn how to manage the stress on the next level, then, then doors swing open. There, there are this, there's this magical thing about life, and I believe it's divinely inspired. You know how you go to the grocery store and you stand at a certain spot, you haven't even gotten to the door yet, but when you get in close proximity, the doors just start opening. When you can stand on a level of life where you're dealing with opposition and pressure and turmoil and take a licking and keep on ticking, and it might have stressed you out. You might have felt the pressure. You might have felt like breaking, but you didn't break. <laughs> Doors just start opening up for you to go to the next level. I'm going to talk more about this in a minute because when I start talking about being, dealing with conflict, all of the conflict is not external conflict. Some of it is internal conflict. Because when you come from back there and you start moving up further and further and further and every step you take takes you to a different level of life and living, sometimes your life is moving faster than your mentality. You can be, have the best you dreamed about, the position you wanted, the ministry you wanted, the opportunity you wanted, and everything moved up except your perception of yourself. Are you following what I'm saying to you? And we're going to share some things that I believe will prepare you for the next move. And I want you to understand something that when, when God begins to move you along in life, it's not an elevator, it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. So many people at attempt to move forward in a rapid motion. They want to go from midnight to morning. They want to go from, uh, from the basement to the presidential suite in one step. That's not what you want. You don't want to take the elevator because if you take the elevator and you get it too fast, you can't handle it. You, you can't handle it. Oh, you, I know you want the money, but you can't handle the pressure and the problems and the conflict and the criticism and the opposition. And so God has designed it that you would move along in steps, in stages not too fast and every time you take a step you have to kind of balance yourself and get used to this level of opposition this level of controversy this level of conflict this level of criticism because again that's what they're paying you for is managing trouble are you hearing what I'm saying to you and just as soon as you get it all down pat and you've mastered it and you say good I'm comfortable now this is now my new normal I'm okay with it then all of a sudden you take another step you're back in a situation where you're learning again and you're being hit in places you never expected to be hit before and you're dealing with life on another level and that happens whether you're in a corporation whether you're in a church or whether you're a family and you just had another child every time you have a child new conflict new problems new things to deal with more to manage more to handle you just got used to having one you come back from the doctor now you're getting ready to have two everything's got to shift everything's got to move everything you learned about the first child doesn't work on the second child it, uh, Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. But, but God is so gracious because he leads you along in steps and stages. And periodically, he will stop the process, allow you to evaluate where you are, to better understand where you are, and put you in a position that you can deal with your heart and mind and emotions that may still be back there where you started. And people are jealous of you and envious of you and, and fighting you and they don't understand that you still perceive yourself as if you were where you started. But the steps of the Lord are leading you higher and higher and further and further and further than you've ever been before. Touch somebody and say, take another step. There's another step waiting for you. There's another dimension of life, another dimension of leadership, another dimension of problems, another dimension of conflict, another dimension of faith and finances and family and all of that. Being afraid that you will reach your goal, but some disaster may result. These are mixed emotions. I want it, but I don't want all the stuff that comes with it. 
I don't want to deal with all the problems that come with it. I don't want to deal with all the disasters. I don't want to deal with the pressures that come with it. I can't handle it. I'm going to stay on this lower level. And when you do that and you reject God's opportunity, you are left with nothing but the hope of magic. Magic is when I'm just going to stay down here where it's comfortable, but some kind of magical way I'm believing that I'm going to get a blessing up here while I'm staying down here. You can't do it. It's like believing God that you're going to get pregnant and not gain weight. I'm just, I want the baby, but I don't want the pregnancy. I don't want the weight. I don't want the stretch marks. I don't want any, I don't want to throw up in the morning. No, all of that goes along with the process. And if you will allow anyone, anything, any voice on the inside to talk you out of this moment, you will forfeit it and be stuck washing your nets when there's a great drought of fish waiting you if you have the courage to believe.